All right, so what we're going to do now, um, I'll bring up um, Minister I mean, He's going to go over a few things, and I promise I'll get into the lessons after that. And uh, uh, this is based upon being that we're fasting and fasting so for this one. Um, I wanted to actually expose y'all to a few different customs or a different uh, understanding of certain Islamic things, and then we'll get into some lessons. All right? Islam? Islam. <coughs> Islam, Islam, family. Islam. I am. I pray for love. I ready. I rise. Right in praise of the great God of love, who is the best known and arranger of all things. I give honors to our prophet, Prophet Noble Jew Ali, who is the last prophet of this new era in time. He's the seventh manifestation in divine flesh. He's the seventh angel, El Haj Sharif Abdul Ali. Mm -hmm. I give honors to Act One. I give honors to our divine constitution and bylaws. I give honors to our grand national flag, our grand national seal, and our grand national emblem. I give honors to this theocratic government in which we all live. I give honors to all of you. I give honors to everything Moorish. I give honors to the brothers and the sisters that spoke before me and those that will speak after me. Islam, family. Islam. Islam. Uh, the minister has asked me to give a brief uh, talk on what uh, we would call prayer or salat in the Arabized world. And this was a command that was given to Prophet Muhammad Ibn Abdullah, who the Grand Quran of Mecca was revealed to. 113 chapters all together, revealed over a period of 25 years. And one of the commands was, it says that those who are faithful establish regular prayer. You have five pillars in Islam, which is faith, prayer, zakat, hajj, and fasting. Well, anyway, when we get to prayer, the first thing in the prerequisite of prayer is a thing which we call evolution. Evolution in the Arabic word means wudu, to purify. And of course, you know, in anything in terms of worship, we must always be purified. In the science of our Morse teachings in Acts 7, it says that all Morse Americans must keep their hearts and minds pure with love. Because we can't go to the altar of the great God in the state of impurity, especially in our minds. So they wash their hands, they wash their arms, they wash their face, they wash over their heads, the back of their neck, their feet. All this is symbolic. Because see, when we, you know, the prophet said if he can get us to thinking, we'll free ourselves. So when you stop and think about it, right? The washing of the hands and the face, does that purify you? Purification comes from the inside. It comes from the inside, from your heart and your mind. You can wash your hands all you want. You can wash your face all you want. Wash your feet, whatever, your whole body. But if your heart and your mind ain't been washed with truth and love, then prayer is null and void. Well, anyway, so after they do that, right, then the first part that they go into, right, you have different positions, right? First thing is that they have a person who's called the Mu'adhan. This person is called the caller to prayer, and he calls out prayer 
you know, and he says, a long white ball, a long white ball, which means the large the greatest. And he goes on and then he says, lie, lie, the law, which means there is no God but the great God, Allah. And then finally he says, a comma to Salah. He's calling everyone. So in the Middle Eastern countries, and in some of the, some of the places we have here in America, where Muslims dominate, right? They make this prayer, they make this call out five times a day to let everybody in the area know it's time for prayer. They pray five times a day. They rise just before the rising of the sun, when the sun is at its zenith, when the sun is at its decline, at sunset, and in the late evening. Notice the five. Right? Five. Symbolic. Right? Perfected man. Anyway, so after the while it calls the people to prayer. Everybody comes in, everybody comes in, right? They line up. Everybody lines up, you know, and then you have, have the person who made the call to prayer, he does what it's called, right? The calling to, right? The action prayer. It comes to Salat. Right? <coughs> Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah Ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah Hayya ala salah Hayya ala al-falah Qad qamatu salah Qad qamatu salah Allahu akbar Allahu akbar la ilaha illallah Allah is the greatest Allah is the greatest Come to prayer Come to success This is the basic call Tell everybody get yourself ready Right, so now everybody's standing up. So then he says, the law act, where you have the imam or the one who leads the prayer in front of the congregation. Right? So now the followers. I'm a follower. So he says the law act. First you start off like this. This is called um preparation. I say a law act, my hands are even right with my ears. This is this is symbolic of surrender. I'm, I'm preparing myself to, to surrender my mind, my body, and my spirit to pray. Then, Allahu Akbar, I go here. What does this remind you of, this position? Anybody? Isn't this the same type of position that they put the people in the coffins? It's symbolic of death, meaning that now, right, I have died from, right, my knowledge of this world. And I'm in a conscious state of spirituality before my God. So now I begin to recite. Alhamdulillah, Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim, in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. Notice how the prayer starts. It starts off with the very name of Allah. The <coughs> name of Allah, the gracious, the merciful. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. All praise belongs to Allah, the Lord of the worlds. Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, most gracious, most merciful. Maliki Yawmiddin. Master of the day of judgment. Thee alone do we worship, and thee alone we seek for help. Guide us on the straight path. Surato Ladina and Amta Alayim, Rayril Mardubi Alayim Walet Balim, the path of whom thy favor thou hast bestowed upon, and not the path of those who have gone astray and earned thy wrath. So, in this position that is recited by the king. Now, in each movement, praise to Allah is given. Allah who had barred. And now I go to the second position. This is called Ruku. I'm beginning my submission. 
Rebbe Zidni Ali, right? Subhanahu Rebbe al Al. Praise be to Allah the Most High. Praise be to Allah the Most High. Right? Sami Allahu Ibn Hamida. Really, Allah alone is worthy of praise. Rabbana lakul him. Really, my Lord, I praise you. Now we're going down into sajda. This is prostration, right? I'm here. Notice, in my forehead, in my arms, my hands, I got seven points touching the ground. Seven points. Also, for those who understand, this is the very position that the baby is in in the mother's womb. It's called suju, prostration. At this point, what is the symbolism that is involved here? The symbolism that is involved here is that I am in total submission to the great God of love. This is symbolism that we're talking about here. This is a ritual. Okay, and now, then I sit back in another position, which is called Joseph. I sit here. In each position, there is a prayer. There's a recitation. I don't want to take y'all through everything. I just want you to get the understanding of what this prayer is all about. Now, what is really going on here? Notice I went through three basic positions in this prayer. And I have to say this because I'm a more Shumerian. Okay? This is a form of meditation. This is dealing with the uniting of the spirit and the body. This is dealing with the disciplining of the mind over the flesh. This is what it represents. This is a ritual. What is the purpose of the ritual? The purpose of the ritual, right, is to get us in order. Is to get us in order. Because the brother read Right? In the teaching, where's the nearest place to meet a law? Okay, can I meet a law on the ground? Can I meet a law on the ground? If if I if I'm singing, right, oh praise the law, praise the law, but my mind is over here. My heart is somewhere else. My emotions or somewhere else. So we find that yes, this is necessary. What is the history? This is our prayer. Our, us, the Marsh Americans. The Marsh Americans. And we don't want to take anything from our Arab brothers, but we are here today, right, to reclaim what's ours. So, uh, this is the last thing I want to say, right? Prayer is definitely important. Even, even our teacher says that when we, when we pray our most American prayer in a state of prostration, sujoo, so it's very, very powerful because of the symbolism that's involved. But in reality, right, we have over 1,400 years of Muslims praying in Salah. And, and this, this i got to add this. Uh, this is not new, as I said. This prayer or this Salat that the Muslims are praying is really a form of meditation. I have it here. I can let you look at it. I didn't want to go too deep into it because they don't want to confuse. My brother asked me to speak on it, right? And I'm, I have to hear and obey because this is my, my teacher. I guess what my teacher says. I know he knows what his purpose is, and that's all that matters. And I hope he 
you got a little bit of understanding of it. Now, the important, I, I think I know the thing, the importance is about prayer. There is a great synonymous or similarity or sameness between what? The Moorish American prayer and what they call the Fatiha, which by the way is called the opening. The opening. <laughs> you know, Fatiha means the opening, just like our prayer. But we say our prayer, right? We have a higher form, we have the English form of our prayer. But we always revert back, as the brother was teaching, right? To our ancient, ancient forefathers teaching. So in that language, Ya Allah at Nu Haru Metanet Haru. Ya Allah Abhet Haru. Ya Allah Ma'at Haru. Ya Allah Hotep Haru. Ya Allah Haru. Ya Allah Ma'at Harakuti. Ya Allah Ahwajet Dajuti. Ya Allah Perk Im Sutet Perk Im Haru. Ya Allah Bamaduti. El Hajit Shepsis Rek Abtu Ali. That is the most Islam, American Islam. prayer. Islam. Right? Yes. In the Cometian language, yes. in the original language. O Allah, Father of the universe. O oh Allah, the Father of love. O oh Allah, the Spirit of truth. O oh Allah, the Spirit of peace. O oh Allah, the Spirit of freedom. O oh Allah, the Spirit of justice. O oh Allah, you are my God. O oh Allah, you are my protector. O oh Allah, you are my salvation by night and by day. O oh Allah, through your holy prophet, O oh Allah, you are me, I me. See? So, what we're giving here is the original. And this is very important when the brother was saying, right, especially in part of our, we don't know who we are, we don't know our own culture, which is very sad, but it's not our fault because, as the brother taught earlier, right, during the time of slavery, right, and matter of fact, our chairman spoke on this, they beat Kunta Kinte <laughs> until he accepted a name that was not his. And that name represented something other than himself. It was a label, you know, like you put on a jar, like you call your cat. Mm -hmm. See, that was not him. They took his name because his name represented what? His name represented his nationality. His name represented the tribe that he belonged to. His name represented the culture that he had. The things that he did, the things that he didn't do, the God that he worshiped. Everything. So when they took his name, see, we didn't think about that when we were watching Roots, right? But see, now we understand that when they took that, they took the very essence. In other words, you could actually say they took the soul of his being. And then what did they do? What did they do after that? They gave him a mindset. They gave us a mindset to go along with the name. Negro, black. colored, and black. And I'm going to end up saying this, right? And get, let my brother get back. I am 67 years old. I can remember coming up. If somebody called you black, those were fighting words. Now we wear it as a badge of honor. We wear it as a badge of honor. And last week, how old is the word? Oh, did you know? that the word black originally was applied, who was it applied to? Mm -hmm. Was it applied to the European? Yes. Oh, it, it was, it was yes. German, right? Yes. And it was French, right? Yes. Black, mm -hmm. yes. meaning devoid of color, devoid of light. So that's why in more science, right? Black means death, death. devoid of life. Mm -hmm. We're not black. We're not Negroes. Mm. We're not colored. These are labels, and there's a mindset that goes with the label. So now, we the Moorish Americans, the tribe of Ali, right, who have been given the universal truth of who we are. We are here, right, according to Acts 6, to teach our people about their nationality and their divine creed so that we can be who we are. We are a nation, okay? A nation. That means you gotta have a nationality. And every nation that I know of got a government. Islam, the best. Islam. Islam. <laughs> Islam. Islam.
Five bucks. Proud of them. Proud of them. We have much more to give y'all. Um, we can't give everything one time. Um, we can sit there and teach amongst ourselves. But that does us no good. Jesus went fishing, didn't he? He was a fisher who? Men. So according to Acts 6, we are supposed to be fishers of who? Men. Our people. Because these teachings belong to them. We can't give it to them if we don't find it. What did Yahushua say? My sheep knows by what? My voice. So when the callers put out angels or thought of Allah who had manifested what? In human flesh. What is the duty? To carry the message. Four corners of the earth. Oh, trust me, we have so much more. I'm excited. I'm honored. I feel so proud to be honest with you. Great demonstration. Later on. Anyway, let's get into today's lesson. And there's a reason why I wanted him to go there. See, what happened is now, it takes a Moorish American to teach what? A Moorish American how to do what? Yeah. 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 Our biggest problem today is we can't get our people to understand that they are a nation of people. You are a separate nation of people. Think about that for a minute. Every nation has everything it needs to sustain itself. Every nation has what it needs to sustain itself. Mm -hmm. Our problem is, once again, is, let me read this and then I'll go into it. And I, I, I can set the backdrop, but just so y'all will figure it out after this. I'm reading Exodus chapter 12, and I'm going to start with the 31st verse. So I'm going into Piscean records today. We're going to play with it. Exodus chapter 12, starting with the 31st verse. That's Exodus, the book, the Bible itself. But I'll get into it. And he called for Moses and Aaron by night. That's after Moses already been doing what he got to do. Went to Pharaoh a couple of times and spoke to him, let my people go. Showed him the signs and wonders of Allah. Yet still Pharaoh's heart was hardened. So and he, being who? Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron by night. And said, rise up and get, ye, and get you forth from among who? My people, both ye and the children of Israel. And go serve the Lord as ye have said. What did Pharaoh just do? Let my people go. Let my people go. Pharaoh have just told Moses, Aaron, and the whole children of Israel, go be yourself and serve your God as you have said that God has commanded you to do. Think about that for a minute. The children of Israel was what? Everybody teach the story, were in bondage, right? Slave to Pharaoh, did what it did. It came a time when Allah sent forth who? Moses to save the who? Israelites from the iron hand oppression of what? Even back then. When they were what? Slaves, Hebrew slaves in Egypt. So God always uses a prophet or use somebody to save a nation. Our people at this particular time were in the same position. Slaves, beaten, didn't know who they were, lost their identity. Lost their name, their religion, their culture, lost their God. Lost your God. What's the first question? Who made you? So in other words, if you don't even know your language, your religion, your God, you don't even know that, who are you? What can you be? Nothing but a slave. So now Moses came to the Israelites or came to Pharaoh and he was telling them what God wanted to do. Telling the Israelites who made them, they are a nation of people, etc., etc. Pharaoh got to the point that he said, and he called for Moses and Aaron by night and said, Rise up and get you forth among, but from among my people, both ye 
and the children of Israel and go serve thy Lord as ye have said. Watch for now. Also, take your flocks, your herds, as ye have said, and be gone. And bless me also. What is asking for also? I'm going to tie this in. Watch this. <clears throat> and the Egyptians were urgent upon the people that they might send them out of the land. <clears throat> I'm going to 35. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses, and they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver, jewels of gold and raiment, and the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians so that they were lent. In other words, here's what's happening. The children of Israel was leaving. What did they get? Reparations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They got everything that they needed for the work that they did. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Didn't they? Yeah. Says so. Here's what I'm, I'm going to give you this piece now. Our Pharaoh told us to do what? When? 1865, Pharaoh told you to do what? Go. Go. You are free. When they wrote what? The 13th Amendment. He told you free. Our problem became when we did what? We never, we never left. left Pharaoh. Now everybody wants to say, well, what we were born here, we made this country what it is. Then the Israelites, were they not born in Egypt? Mm -hmm. Some of them, that generation, mm -hmm. they were born there. They still packed up and they went across over the Red Sea. Didn't they? Mm -hmm. Our people still want to stay stuck to Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. right. Amalgamation. But yet still we want reparations. <laughs> right. How is that gonna work? It ain't. The children of Israel didn't stay in Egypt. Right. They didn't stay in Egypt. They got their silver, they got their gold, they did everything, and Pharaoh even said, guess what? And bless me when you leave me. In other words, forgive me. Can we be friends? Same thing in the United States to say. They don't have a problem with us doing what we need to do. I'm going to show you another reason again, too. Your Oshua, when he was in, came to the Israelites back then, and you remember they brought him before Pharaoh, before Pilate? And what did Pilate say? Not like that. I see no fault in this man. No fault. Because his own people. Once again, our own people are saying we are what? Doing something wrong. You go to anybody that knows law, or even the United States, guess what they say? We see no fault. What do you want me to do? They ain't doing nothing wrong. But who's solving the problem? We are once again because we are fighting to stay where? Stay on the Egypt. <laughs> Our minds have been messed up. We're not following the one that God sent in order to give us those lessons in order for us to be ourselves. And we wonder why we're in the position that we are. Every nation has its own what? You said it last. Its own what? Government. Its own government. The children of Israel, when they left Pharaoh and they crossed over the sea, they were in the wilderness for 40 years. Wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. Elijah Muhammad speaks about us. Us being the lost tribe of what? In the wilderness of where? North America. North America. Listen to the language. What are they doing? Listen to the language. They're giving you lessons that belong to who again? Our ancient who? Yeah. Ancient ancestors, ancient fathers. But we ain't listening because we're trying to still listen with whose ears? Toby's ears. He brought you your nationality and your divine creed. What you want me to do? Kill you? You ain't listening. 
I'm giving you the keys to your salvation, the keys to your freedom. Now, if I could only get you to think it, you would save yourself. I brought you the lesson. Take these lessons and do what? Free yourself. If the United States gave us a reparation check, each one of y'all right now reparations, what you gonna do with it? Go to the mall. Go to the mall. <laughs> go to the mall. <laughs> Stimulate the economy because you're right. gonna take it and spend it. That's not reparation. Give it back. That's right. Right back to them. So once again, those that are teaching you, they're not teaching you the lessons of your forefathers. They're teaching you the lessons to keep you what? Right here. Only way that we are able now to give you the ancient prayers and the ancient teachings, and it's supposed to be amongst yourselves so that you can learn to be yourselves. Pray. This way, everything that comes from your nation goes right back to your nation. Mm -hmm. All your medicines, your doctors, your lawyers, your engineers, everything that you create, then you be that pure, clean nation. So that your citizens and your posterity can feed off of everything that Allah has blessed you to be that beacon, what? Of light that's standing on the hill. But you can't shine, you can't be yourself living under somebody else's. They're going to always change the rule to do what? To keep them on top. And if you notice, the measuring stick has always been what? Being moved. You go to school, get an education, get a good job, and you can get a good job. Now you go get the job, what's happening now? I don't like the way your name is on the application, so guess what's going to happen now? <laughs> oh, it's going in the can. So now here you are, you got a PhD in whatever it is, you still can't get a job. Why? Oops, your name is this. Or your name is that. So what that point becomes again? They're doing what they got to do for their what? For their posterity. You have your own nation. Your name is what? Choose. All of us may have the same name around there. So you might have to say, well, guess what? That is, uh, I'm going to use Miriam, but we know Mariam, or what you want to pronounce it in Egyptian. So now, you got to now say that that's the daughter of whom? You know what I'm going now? Because we used to say, oh, Bar Joseph or Bar this, because now we got to make a distinction of which Miriam you are. Because now we're amongst ourselves. It's your teachings. We've got to get you back to understand that there's only one way that how you can develop and be your own people. One way. look at the children of Israel under Moses or under Egypt and let's look at the Moorish Americans under the United States and the reason why I'm saying that because that's what Abraham Lincoln used in order to figure out how I'm going to free these people what am I going to do with them they used the same last situation that was ever done on record which was who Israelites in what bondage in Egypt so when Leviticus code and all that was written, it was using the same problem, same things, because they're the same lessons. Why is it that our prophet would be the only one to come and save our people, but leave you right on the same one that have you in bondage? Moses didn't do that. Moses didn't do that. Everybody understand that? Men and now. Jesus, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> <laughs> How's what? It seems as if, uh, like, it's the point of, like, you don't have to run anymore. You, you shouldn't have to run. All you got to do is be yourself. In other words, how can anybody stop you from being who you are? That is what it means, your nature, which is God-given rights. That's why I say your birth rights. Right? To be who you are. So that now you can what have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of what? Happiness. Pursuit of happiness. You can only get that from amongst yourself. You can never get that being under the hands of another man government because what they're going to do is look out for their own people. Look out for their own sides. Have you what? 
you trying to fit in with what they do? Have you trying to fit in what they're doing? You never do that. Who's our forerunner? Marcus Mosiah Garvey. Who was Jesus' forerunner? John the Baptist. So John the Baptist came paving the way for who? So we're all sure, right? John the Baptist came crying out in the wilderness. Crying out. Preparing a way to meet their king. The one who was going to come and give them the information that they needed in order to free themselves from the iron hand oppression of Rome. That was your Yehoshua. So come, get yourself ready for this teaching that's coming to teach you how to get from under the iron hand oppression of Rome. Come, listen, listen. It's almost like the call to prayer. Allah Akbar, same thing, right? Come, let's get this information. Come so I can give it to you so that you can go do what? Act 6. So you can go teach your people what they need now in order for them to save themselves. So now, those that were in control of our people or in control of the Israelites back then, who were they? The Sadducees and the Pharisees. Controlling them. Teaching them that how we're black. Black and I'm proud. Strong Asiatic. But then even Asiatic. Negro, NAACP, that's what they put right now. Mm -hmm. All these organizations call them the, right, the Pharisees and Sadducees because they got your attention right now. Teaching you everything that they want to teach you to keep you locked. Why? Because just like the Pharisees did back then with, uh, with, 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 with Yahushua, they have already made agreements with the Pilsky nations of Europe to control those people. Same thing as today. How did they control? When it came time to your shrub, when they asked him, well, meet your what? Your king. What do they say? That's not our king. Who's our king? Caesar is our king. Caesar represented what? The Roman government. So now we come and telling you, come meet noble Jurali. Come meet your teaching. Come meet your salvation. Everybody tell we are separate nation. This is who you are. Giving you that holy breath, that gospel. What are they teaching you? Oh no, who we are? We belong to the United States of America. That's our government. That's in between it. It's the same thing. Same principles. I hope y'all just understood what I just gave you. Did you get that? Because now they brought Yehoshua up on charges for what sedition, right? saying that he was trying to overthrow the government of Palestine. The head now of the Palestine of the Pesachian nation, which is Pilate, saying, man, I see no fault in this man. What you telling me this man is trying to do is what? It's lawful. It's what he's supposed to do. To be your own selves. Be your own people. So that now, this nation could do this, but this nation did So you stand up. I find no fault. I wash my hands. Do what you will because I know according to divine law and divine plan, if I do this man wrong based upon what he's saying, what Moses did what? Go serve the Lord, uh, serve as you have said. Yahushua was doing the same thing. If they go contrary to that, divine punishment comes. What? What do we do? Crucify our leaders. They crucify, they cru did what? Crucify the leader. They crucify the leader. That's exactly what we do. Mm -hmm. Why? Because those who we control now is painting your picture, not painting your mind, got you thinking that, guess what? That's what they want you to control. They want that control. Because they got you listening to them, but they ain't trying to free you. Because they already made the deal over here to do what? For the big piece of chicken. <laughs> so they crucified their freedom. So they crucified their freedom. Mm -hmm. I ain't telling you, I ain't giving you the keys for you to stand up for yourself. Because I need you so that I can live in a big house. Right. Right. Do the work? Sit back. So now you get in trouble, what do you do? You run to them. For them to do what? To try to free you as what? 
or give you help. When in actuality, they're not helping you, they're helping themselves. That's because right. now they're going to make a leader. Okay, well, don't give them 10 years. How about giving them six? Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How about giving them four? Okay, let's put them on probation. Yeah. They just got paid. Right, right. Yeah. They ain't giving you the freedom. Because why? They ain't teaching you that you are not Negro. Right. You're not Negro, you're not colored, you're not black, you're not African American, you're not Afro American, you're none of those things. They teach you all of that in school, even when, especially during the month of February, what do they call it? Black, black History Month. Right. All your information goes straight back to what? Slavery. And they keep pumping the slave right. narrative, pumping the slave Slaves. narrative. Yeah. Why slave right. movement to keep your mind on that level? Right. So now you're looking at everything. No, what were you before you were slaves? That's what we just talked about. That's why the brother gave you even the prayer in the ancient form. Yes. Didn't want to go there yet, but I'm glad he did. Yes, 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 Islam. And there's a reason why he did. Allah is the governor of all the men. He's the best of planets. So it was divine. I'm glad he did now. The lessons are yours. You can't get them out there in their schools. You can't get them in, in their church. You've been churching for how long? <laughs> Since we've been here. <laughs> you ain't never heard nothing like this. And you ain't going to in there because that's not what it's for. You remember come to Kitten Roots? I've said this before. When they held up the baby and they said, What Allah was but. No, they only caught that in the movie, did you? Mm -hmm. The slave to and behold the greatest thing than yourself. That's yours. It's freezing? I thought I was on fire, baby. I've been telling you it's cold. <laughs> I tell you what, Jason. Can't wait with you. <laughs> That's my secretary. Thank you, saving us all. Thank you. <laughs> 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 so, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 So I had a discussion lost on top of lost. You in a, you, you lost in the gate and you still lost. Yeah. yeah. Why don't put yeah. Jews and Gentiles? Huh? Jews is along with them. Jews and Gentiles. So in other words, Jews, watch this now. Yeah. Jews are supposed to be the chosen people. Yes. yes. And according to the Jewish tradition, if you're not a Jew, you're going. Yes. Which is Gentile. You are just the slaughter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're like a cow. You're like a cow. Like a pig. That's yeah. actually what that word means. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then they never tell you, well, listen to this. They never tell you. <laughs> and, I, and I gotta do this too. Because I had the argument with my barber. I love my barber. I go get my hair cut with him all the time. And he does a good job, but I, 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 I almost got out of his chair because I'm like, look, you gotta you gotta stand for truth. If, if right. you don't teach me and we, we you, you want to say okay, you want me to convert to Christianity. I've been there, done that. I know what's what. Studying to be a preacher, I know that no, that's not what it is. So if you you ever like you ever tell somebody like look man, okay, this is a computer, this is a laptop. You can see it's a laptop, right? Mm -hmm. So it's true, it's factual. Mm -hmm. But they don't say, look, that's your interpretation of the laptop, yeah. or what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I get lost. <laughs> I, and stuff like that is what they teach in the Christian yeah, church. Right. It messes it's me true. up. It's true. Yeah. Okay. It's true. Now, give me a simple, if I can get you to thinking, right? You say to yourself. Same book we're reading, right? Same book we read it. So we're using the book to have a conversation. So I said, okay, let's talk Revelation chapter 2 and 9. 2 and 9. Revelation 2 and 9. I know thy works and tribulations and poverty. Listen to that. How many people know Jews to be poor? Exactly. Okay. 
Move on, skip, that's not even what I want. <coughs> but thou art rich. Yes. Now watch this part now. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. That's right. Who do you, who are poor? Who poor? Who the poor people? The Negroes, the black, the Negroes, the black, the black that's you. Watch it now, but listen to, the, listen to the scriptures now. Listen to it. Because when you read, you got to understand what it is. Okay. I know thy works and thy tribulations. Who the heck are the people that have more tribulations? Right. Across the globe. Across the globe. I know your works. I know your tribulations. No problem. And poverty. But thou art rich. I know what you're going through. You are rich. And I know the blasphemy. What's blasphemy? Lies. <laughs> <laughs> Propaganda. Pro you understand what I'm going to know? Yeah. What it says. I'm just, this, this is in the book. And it's in red, so you know who's speaking. It's in red. Right, right. Okay, it ain't me. <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> and this is my brother now. Me and him, I'm going through now because it's yo. And it said, the blasphemy of them yes. which say they are. Jews. I know the lies of those who say they are Jews and are not. So I posed a question for him. Dude, <laughs> Jews, and then there are some saying that they're Jews, but they're not. Who are those who are saying they are Jews and not? Right. Okay. Simple question. Because now he tried it. I'm not a supporter of Obama and in between. I ain't going all of that. The Bible says that uh, <clears throat> that uh, he would bless those who bless Israel and bless the Jews. And right now, Obama want to speak. One of them went over there. Want to speak to Netanyahu how he want now. Trump is blessing the Israel. He's one of one of my people. Same because I'm Obama now. I'm like a dude. You a Trump lover? And you saying that Trump is doing God's work, blessing Israel? This is what he's doing. I, I, and, and that's, we need our Morris, bar, we need our Morris barbershop, please. Yeah. Because now, I'm to the point now, I'm ready to take my money from him now. Right. That's right. I want to spend my money somewhere else. But he been cutting my hair, I don't like my wig cut. You know, so I'm like, oh my God, now I'm facing the dilemma. Yes. <laughs> Serious dilemma yes, yes. Grow your dreads, man. Yes, yes, bro, I have to. Because you know your sisters don't go to anybody to do your hair, right? Right, right. right. So I'm facing the dilemma. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's, it's so significant, right? Because, you know, when you really... The prophet is beautiful, right? Because he said, if he can get us to think, we will free ourselves. So now we have to stop and think, right? The word Jew, right? Are there any J's in Hebrew? No. 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 Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we, we can do that. <laughs> you see, what... Not what, even in the language. Okay, okay. That's a good one. But... <laughs> How do you deal with them that ain't thinking? They, you right. gotta, you gotta meet them where they at. That's right. So he knows you. I couldn't go into that lesson That's right. too deep because now you know we're gonna send me. Ah, oh, man, man did that. Yeah. Man is doing yeah. because that's the conversation they're gonna have. Oh, you listening to a man said this. Now he don't know Hebrew. Oh, that's good. I'm saying he don't know Aramaic to right. even say that whether it's legit. He don't know that. So I can't right. go there with him. I can't right. do that. Can't go that way okay with him. I gotta meet him where he at. Cause now he's telling me now the Jews in Israel. So I gotta meet him where he at. That's right. So I said, brother, I give him another lesson now. Do you know how the state of Israel as is it today, how it was created? Ah oh, man. Recent history. I'm recent history. I'm giving it to him now. Now in between now. I said, because at one point, they left that land and got dispersed. After Titus, a Roman emperor, went in there and sacked Jerusalem about 70 AD. 
Now I'm giving in historical points and facts. I'm just not I'm just I'm not pulling stuff out of my mouth. Sorry, you didn't say that part. I'm not just pulling it out of my mouth. <laughs> I'm giving in historical dates and historical facts of things that happened. He can't he can't deal with that. So I said, okay. Do you know the difference between an Ashkenazi Jew and a Sephardic Jew? He couldn't answer that again. Because they don't teach you these in the Christian church. They don't give you this type of information. So now I'm giving them factual understanding now, and now he can't deal with that. So I said, okay, let me give you a piece of nugget. Let me tell you what happened. Those people, according to the scripture, that are in Israel now, calling themselves Jews, are actually Ashkenazi. Which actually were in Europe from this empire called Khazari. Okay? That's what it is. So, in other words, they had the little kingdom in Europe. Islam was spreading all over. Islam coming down one way this way, Attila the Han. Coming down the other way. Mm -hmm. King Bulan decided, oh, oh, hell no. <laughs> we get ready to get invaded on, right? We don't want to deal with the Hans. And we show a scared of Islam. So he took his whole country, nation, and convert them to what? Judaism. Judaism. Hmm. Converts. 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 Blasphemy. Oh. <laughs> Revelations now. So now they say now all of a sudden because they study in Judaism, they're what? Jews. Jews. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what they did. Now, let's forward a little bit more. The war of World War II and the Seven Day War, etc., etc fought in Palestine and the Balfour Treaty. Mm -hmm. They decided now, well, we're looking for a place to put these people on a Jewish homeland. Because mm -hmm. you remember from 70 AD, the original Jews had already been dispersed all over. Yeah. The original Jews ain't there. Right. So what happened now, we're the Jews and we need our Jewish home state. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Watch this. In my house, right? I can go home and turn my key to my house. I know where I live. You don't have to tell me where I live. Because when I leave it, I know that's my home. Here's what happened. So when it came time now to find them, to put them into the Jewish, they had to pick certain places from certain places. One of the places they thought of was South America thought about the Congos. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, wait a minute now. You should know where your home is. Right. Why do I need to choose right. <laughs> from different parts of the world mm -hmm. to say that, I, I, that we might put Israel over there mm -hmm. or we might put Israel over here? Mm -hmm. Send them back to Kazari. No, but they want, no, 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 no. They don't want Kazari. Right. Because they're blasphemous. Mm -hmm. According to the scripture, right, right, right. saying that they're the Jews. And right. I gotta find a Jewish what? A Jewish state. Yeah, yeah. A Jewish home. Yeah. So now they ended up with Palestine. That's what Palestinians still there. Palestine is still there. Exactly. Okay. Part of the agreement after World War II. Part of the agreement after World War II. Yeah. Yeah. It was a deep uh, deception too. Deep deception, Balfour Tree. That's how they ended up there. So now that uh, Said they left here. You left it. You left. You left here black. I don't use the word black because that's what they use. You left here black. Now you come back looking somewhere else. I don't want to recognize you. And they won't. No. So, but a lot of them are making deals now, though, because of the big economic. So, either the Bible is right, or we might as well throw it away. And what I mean by that is, if we say we're going to follow the book, those of us that. My barber said he's following the book. You understand what I'm going on? He's following the book. 
So then the question comes, who are those that say they're Jews? What are they? I can prove it to you. They worship in synagogues. They worship in synagogues. All I know it has always been a temple. Satanic. <laughs> yeah, but listen, King Solomon built what? A temple. A temple. A temple. Mm -hmm. Ezra. A temple. He never built no synagogue. Mm -hmm. He built a temple. Jerah, mm -hmm. <laughs> he brought you back what? A temple. A temple. A temple. Oh, the first thing he set up was what? The Canaanite temple. temple. But you do, you do have some rabbis that will tell you about the whole Ashkenazi and Israeli. Right. Oh, the Jews. Yes, some of them in New York will try to tell you the truth. Yeah. Some of them will. But you ain't get that in the Christian church. No. You won't get that. God said he didn't need them to build that temple. Oh. That was a temple built by man. Not a temple built by what? By hands. Right. right. It's this. Where's the nearest place to meet where? In the heart. So they're constantly doing what the symbolisms. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. And Drew, they brought you back the truth. Yes. But the truth is right here for them. No. We they, read it, we hear it, but we don't receive it. Yeah, because we don't have uh, They don't oh, see it for themselves. They, see, they, they don't, don't read it for themselves. Islam, 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 Islam. Yeah, right. it's this first, and then complete. So what we have to, to, to realize is that a huge spell has been cast mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On the humanity. The people, on, that's right. Mm -hmm. And so the way that the Bible is taught in the church has cast yes. this spell. Mm -hmm. And so when you talk to your barber, he don't even have a, a consciousness mm -hmm. where he can above, go above that. And in order to break the spell, you have to have the truth. Exactly. But you have to accept it. Be yes, so truth. That's why when we Be begin, it. I said it doesn't make a difference who you tell the truth for. Your job is to do what? Just be the truth message. and tell the message. Yeah. Yeah. Because that seed now is, oh, Allah says this. Plant the seed, he'll do what? Water. water. No, bring the increase. He will bring the increase. Right. One plant, one water, one give the increase. And the book of Ezekiel. And the book is at the time of it. Can the dry bones have light? Yeah. Only yeah. by speaking, speaking the truth can these bones come to life. Because when you hear this truth, guess what happened? Jeremiah said it first. It's like fire. Shut up, my bones. That's the truth that our people have to hear. Because now, when you get it, it starts to fall and make a whole bunch of sense to you. But the pastors, once again, they're not there to give you the truth. And I tell you the truth, right? Because I was told that. Let me tell you how to get money from our people. In the church. I'm gonna wait a minute now. Then the brother said, when you start your nonprofit work, you gotta do it as what? Service. Don't ever go looking for money. If you go doing this for money, you've already lost it. Jesus told his disciples, don't even take it out of you when you go anywhere. Go. Give Caesar what belongs to him. Give Caesar what belongs to him. Then not only that, if you have done a good job to service to somebody and you have a need, they'll fill you with a need. That's right. Reciprocity is divine it, law. Right. It is a, it's a law of uh, reciprocity. It's divine law. It's divine law. Not only is that the promise, <laughs> but happen if this place is where you give a life, it's not where you basically make a living. Connect the bones to the bones. Then you have your nations. Then your nation can protect each body. Then when you protect your body, everybody can do their life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. You're killing us. The church is. They kill the field. Yes. The pastor. But somebody brought up the word about Gentiles. Was it Gentiles and Jews? Who was it? Jews, Jews and Gentiles. That's how we got into this, right? Jews and Gentiles. So let's bring it up. Jews and Gentiles. We want to teach. Make it plain, brother. Make it plain. I ask him the same question again. Brother, stop telling people you are a Gentile. You're not. Oh, that's what the Bible says. I said, really? Now they teach this in church. Really? That's what the Bible says. That you are a Gentile. Mm -hmm. mm. How many of you have heard this before? They're asking the same thing. We were cursed because of Ham. Mm -hmm. 
But I heard that in church. Sure. Because I'm ham, so I know it's nakedness and yeah. all that, right? Mm -hmm. So we were cursed. So because of ham, we were cursed. They accept that. They, they teach that in church. I know they do. Yeah. They probably still teach it. Yeah, they still and curse is the man that hang on a tree. Curse the man that hang on a tree and we will hung. Yeah. We hung us forever. Yeah. And Mississippi yeah. and right here in North Carolina, we will hung. So it's gotta be y'all. That's why y'all curse. As a matter of fact, y'all black skinned yeah, curse. because of the curse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the moral. That's what they said. Yeah. That's what they said. And they use it to justify it. But, but, but watch here now. Allah told Moses, take his hand, put it in his bosom, and it came out white as what? That's right. It changed. It changed. That wasn't the original. Now watch this now. Put your hand back in, take it out, and it became whole. Now, I got to tell you this. Aaron and Miriam fought against Moses for marrying the Ethiopian woman. Allah did what to Miriam and Aaron? Tearing them lepers. Tearing them lepers. Oh, Allah don't put this in on me. Turn them from the original to lepers. Allah don't do this to me. But yes, then, they teach you that you are Curse because of the sin. Yes. Well, wait a minute now. You turn because of the sin. But how did Allah? Wait a minute. <laughs> this is confusing. But they can't think in the church. Right. If I can get you to think it, now wait a minute now. And we're going to go down another one too. Put your hand in your bosom. Do my way. Oh, Allah don't put this on me. But you were sin. Now that's what they're saying. And you turn right. Wait a minute. That don't compute. What was the hand before he. Yeah, it don't compute. Somebody telling you something I like. Okay. That was the thing that freaked Pharaoh out. Yeah, but. Let's read. The book. Genesis chapter 10. Same thing I told him the book. If you're going by the book and you're teaching the book. Good Lord. <laughs> Get in the house. Now these are the generations of Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Sons of Noah. Sons of Noah. These are the generations. The sons, first one. It says that were born after the flood. The sons of Japheth. We're going to talk about the sons. Who are the sons of Japheth? Goma and Magog. And Mediah, and Javan, and Tubal, and Meshach, and Daras. So in other words, you got to find these. These sons had nations. Russia, all of those, couples that mountains. That's sons of Japheth. Okay? And they're telling you, and Gomer, watch it now. And the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz. Did we just say them by Ashkenaz Jews? Okay? And Rifa, Babylon, Goran, and Goran. Read into that. Now I'm going to Ham. Okay, Ham. They said we were cuss, a curse. And no, no, I gotta go back. 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 To Javan, and it goes on. And the sons of uh, Rifta and Togama, and the sons of Javan, Elisha and Tarshish, 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 Tarshish. Think about that. I'm gonna tell you about what Tarshish is. Hmm. Kitam and Doda. By these were the isles of the Gentiles mm -hmm. divided in their lands, everyone after his tongue, after their family in their nations. Okay. okay. That's one son, Japheth, right? Genesis chapter 10. Genesis chapter 10, that's one son. Mm -hmm. But you came from Ham. Right. You came from Ham. Mm -hmm. It just told you who the Gentiles came from. Right. Mm -hmm. The Gentiles came from who? From Japheth. So can you be a Gentile? No. Because you came from yeah. him. Mm -hmm. You got it, Mr. Mary? You got it, Mom? You see? <laughs> okay, now. Now let's get in there. And the sons of Ham, Cush, mm -hmm. Mizraim, Foot, Cain, mm -hmm. <laughs> and the sons of Cush, Sheba, Havilah, Septah, 
Ramoth, Cush, we got Nimrod, all these that I just named, you know where they are today, modern day? Egypt, yeah. Palestine, Lebanon, all those are you. Libya, Syria, Libya, Syria. Syria all those are you. Mm. You didn't come from the islands <laughs> of mm -hmm. Japheth. Mm -hmm. But the pastor, Jews and Gentiles. Yeah. Right. Protestants and the Lord. <laughs> and, and it's interesting that it talks about the Isles. Of course, the British Isles. <laughs> but they lying to our people's interests yeah. left and right. Yeah. But you don't know that because they ain't giving you the information in order for you to unfold. And most of us don't read the Bible. And most of us don't read. Right. You, mean, hey, listen. you know what I told you? How to get money from our people. Wow. Our pastor said they don't even listen to what you're saying. All you have to do is raise your octave or yeah. raise your voice. Mm -hmm. Good God yeah, exactly. makes you feel good. You came out of church and you come out of church. Oh man, pastor preaches. Hey, yeah. <laughs> woo, it was hot. Spirit was woo, fair. Did you feel that? I, music can make music. you feel good. That's why when you hear the pastor preach, you get an organ in and hit the drum. All I'm doing is messing with your frequency, your energy. That's right. That's right. That's psychological. It's psychological and biological. That's all it is. And biological. Yes, we are a spiritual. We are. We are emotional people. They mess with your mental. You get God Almighty riding on the Honda. It's all about the teaching. 
Who taught the slaves how to read the Bible? Ah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And who told them what to teach? Right. That's mm -hmm. right. Well, they use the Bible to keep, keep their mindset there. Mm -hmm. In Exodus, I think it talks about the slavery. And well, that's that good to be, to follow your master. Right. And right. 12 days is, what, what was that? Slaves were they, right? they, 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 they were reading scripture about how many stripes they can mm -hmm. walk, how right. they can well, they be. Right. Of course. Right. With the Bible. Right. So we're going to use the book. <laughs> we're going to use the book. Gen Revelation chapter 10. What are the angels? Thought of who? Thought of a lot. Manifested in what? Flesh. So we're looking for a body. We're looking for a man. We're looking for no spook. It wasn't no spook that taught Muhammad. So now, let's get into it. And I saw another mighty angel. Another mighty angel. Revelation chapter 10. We know what is our prophet to us. An angel of Allah. An angel of Allah. And not a mighty angel, that means angels, there were more than one. Mm -hmm. Another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head. A rainbow. What's that rainbow? Faith. Seven spectacles in a rainbow, right? That's truth, knowledge, understanding, everything that there is. On his head, circle seven. Circle seven. Seven spectra in his head. Here's my man. It, rep it represents the seven universal principles. Also, uh, of course. Mentalism. Uh -huh. Teach. Correspondence. Teach. Vibration. Uh, and what? Rhythm. Vibration. Oh. Cause and effect. And gender. Mm -hmm. Those are universal laws. Okay. Divine. So who brought you that universal, that divine creed and the divine law? That seventh angel. Let's teach now. Circle seven. Now, I would get into it, and I think I might get him a preacher. Now, we got an organ player here. Shut up. Shut And his face was as it were the sun. Mm. And his feet, a of fire. Good God Almighty. Watch this now. And he had in his hand a little book open. He had in his hand a little book open. What's his hand? According to what? The, the hand is symbolic to the mind. To the mind. And in his, what? Because already they had already told him. Well, let's get into it now. The, ooh. Yeah. And he had in his hand a little book open. And he set his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the earth. And he cried out with a loud voice and with a lion roar. And when he had cried, seven thunders uttered. In other words, they are already told them. Because in the convention teaching, you got to memorize these lessons. He said, eat it. Eat this little. Eat it. Every last one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> eat it. Eat this information. Eat this lessons. Eat this information we're giving you. Eat it. At first, you're going to hear some stuff that was going to be bitter to your soul. You, oh my God, they lied to me. Yes. Mm -hmm. be it's going to be bitter. Yes. I can't, ooh, these jokes at me. Yeah. You mean I didn't have to pay time like that? Ooh, yeah. that I took my money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I took my money. They got me. Shoot, you know You understand? They got me. But then, it was sweet. Yeah. To the bed. Yeah. Why? Because you've gotten something that oh has set your soul yes. not free. on fire, but has given you freedom. Yes. Why? I've covered the lies that y'all have been telling me for so long. Who is it? The father of this world, the biggest liar that there is. Father of lies. Father of lies. And the true fame. And the devil himself. From the pits of hell. Have our people trapped. Locked in this foolishness. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> oh, <laughs> Ramen. <Ramey. laughs> yes. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. We gotta stop. No, we don't. We gotta stop the milk. Why? No, we gotta stop. We might have to extend this time. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I get paid as <laughs> 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 Give, 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 give. What's the moment again? 
Good God! Oh! Anybody, any questions? I'm not cutting it off. That's it. Don't quench the spirit. No. I got one question. Yes, brother man. That last chapter you were reading, who, what was that in reference to? Oh, sorry about that. Prophet Noble Jurali. That's the only one that came bringing you the lessons that's in his mind, locked and loaded. Ain't nobody else going to give you that. Any other question? And you've never heard of the one that came to give you your salvation. They teach you different things. They don't even talk about them in school. They teach you about every other slave. Except the one that brought you your nationality and your divine decree. So I say, let's break it down, announcements, and then we get ready to read.